Have you ever wanted to be inside Mission Control? Well, I've found just the thing for you. And while the thought of a long-lost relative may be a little bit disconcerting, this long-lost relative might be even more strange. Scientists may have found our son's long-lost sibling. Hello, space fans, and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. Looking at the way that stars form in nebulae across the galaxy, we know that they form in clumps and clusters of thousands to hundreds of thousands. So if that's the case, the sun should have many brothers and sisters floating out there. Part of this search that astronomers have been doing is finding stars that are relatively close, but have similar chemical composition as our sun. The other part requires observations of the dynamics of these stars, which are the unique orbits they have in the Milky Way. Now, my favorite spacecraft at the moment, Gaia, will be taking care of a lot of the dynamics, which means that there will be a lot of observations needed for the chemical compositions of individual stars. Dr. Ivan Ramirez at the University of Texas at Austin said this is a long process that must be done the old-fashioned way, star by star. But that doesn't mean that each individual star needs to have the complete analysis done to it. There are ways of narrowing down the search, like looking for elements such as yttrium or barium. Taking the dynamics data will not only allow astronomers to find out how many stars were formed with our sun, but to know exactly where our sun was formed within our galaxy. The most recent candidate is HD 168826, which is found in the constellation Hercules. The star has been observed for 15 years by the McDonald's Observatory Planet Search Team, by a complete coincidence, which means we have a lot of information about this particular star. As more spectroscopic and dynamical data is collected, it's only a matter of time to find out precisely where our sun came from. Major Tom, this is Grand Control, eh? It's been one year since Chris Hadfield released the Space Oddity music video that he filmed aboard the International Space Station. It blended two worlds, the fictional world of Major Tom and the reality that we have astronauts on board the International Space Station at all times who can tell you that the Earth really is blue. But we don't need a video anymore to tell us that the Earth is blue, because now there's live streaming HD video from the International Space Station at all times. The High Definition Earth Viewing Program, or HDEV, is a series of cameras mounted on board the International Space Station. There are four, giving us four unique perspectives of what the Earth looks like from orbit. The system was launched in April on the SpaceX Dragon capsule and soon went online, offering everybody and anybody with an internet connection the ability to see the Earth from the International Space Station. There are times when the feed goes dark, usually when the ISS is passing over the dark side of the planet. There's also times when the screen goes gray, when the cameras are switching between one and the other. Sometimes, however, the video feed just goes down momentarily and you have to wait to refresh it. But when you go to the website set up by the Johnson Space Center, you get more than just a view of the Earth. You get real-time tracking from Google Maps and a view of the planet showing exactly where the ISS is and where it's going. So, space fans, if you never get the opportunity to don that helmet and see the Earth from space yourself, at least you can watch it live streaming from the comfort of your home. Well, that's it for this week, space fans. Give us a thumbs up if you like it, and if you want to stay up to date with more space fan news, don't forget to subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at Space Fan News and also at Google Plus at Plus Space Fan News. Amy, thank you so much for joining me this week. Uh, where can space fans find more about you? You can find me on Twitter as AST Vintage Space and my blog Vintage Space, which is hosted at Popular Science. And coming up in the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing another live tweet of an Apollo mission. This time, it's the 45th anniversary of Apollo 10. So you can relive it in real time, plus 45 years. That, that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. So, space fans, thank you all for watching. And as always, keep looking up.